Good day to you humans. This is the story of the history of the world. It may sound incredible to you, but then isn't the world existence and everything incredible? An omnipotent God of infinite magnitude, both male and female, created the universe that we know, and our planet, and much more besides that most people have yet to realize. He created the first two human beings who were then, they were beautiful beings, beautiful. God made them so perfectly. Because Adam and Eve, the first two humans, were having many more children. Abel wasn't, of course, poor fellow. He was the first to enter the spirit world. Yes. The place we go to when we dream. Cain was there. And as Adam and Eve had more children, Cain obviously had a mate. And he had children. And then Adam and Eve's children had children. And within a few hundred years, there were quite a few people about. Because they lived some 900 years. People started to notice when Cain was around, things kind of cooked up a bit do anything to Cain and you get some serious karma but he was still played with the fact that he couldn't grow anything out of the ground so he made a city and people grew for him and the other children of Adam and Eve who had brown eyes were starting to think this is a bit unfair and Enoch walked with God for 300 years talking about it and eventually went back well before he went back somebody else did something bad one of Cain's descendants Lamech took for himself two wives now they knew back in those days that everybody had a mate a destined mate there was Someone that fitted you perfectly. Perfectly. Way better than anyone else. If you're struggling to believe this, <clears throat> let me just remind you. God made humans in God's image. Now God is an all-feeling soul. That's the bit which lasts forever. As God in God's image is a male part and a female part of his soul. So we all have a male and female part. So your mate is out there. This guy called Lamech, he took himself too. Now that's naughty, isn't it? Taking somebody else's mate? Lamech was given blue eyes and all his descendants would have blue eyes. And anyone who kills Lamech is avenged 77 fold. Now this was getting serious and people didn't particularly want to serve Lamech so they kind of banished him to the north. The blue eyes were sent to the north. No one's died yet apart from who's been killed. So they don't know they're going to die but maybe they're starting to notice I'm getting a bit old, I'm getting a bit creaky. Probably inevitably I'm going to die. Hey, what did Enoch talk about with God? Hey, I don't know. But it's something to do with this unfairness of the line. They were not happy about it. They saw this green-eyed and the blue-eyed as being sort of superior to them, which isn't true. Because remember, they're cursed. And if the green eyes are cursed in the sense that they cannot profit from the wealth of the earth, i.e. 
they're not going to be successful in planting crops and such. What sort of curse do you think the blue eyes have got? Plagued by insects, you know, perhaps flies annoy them or something like that. Anyway, so you have these three class of people and you have a line of brown eyes in Seth who aren't completely happy about and they go and do a really bad thing. Yeah. By the time we get to Noah, Noah's been convinced by his father, who was convinced by his father, to cause this third sin and get the avenge fold of 777. Well, it never works, but he tells a big fat lie and hides the truth from people for ever since then. You know what happened? to those of Lamech they were sent up north right their skin turned white but those blue eyes in the north they weren't going to stay there forever were they and of course in war anyone kills a blue eyed gets avenged 77 fold gives them an extraordinary advantage, doesn't it not? And if we look at the way history has turned out, doesn't it make sense? The world is filling up with the line of Lamech. So we come to today. The blue eyes are growing. They need to use fertilizer to grow their crops. They need to use pesticides to kill the insects. They have no choice. But it's not good. Imagine if we did have a massive war with the brown eyes, they could end up getting wiped out if they attacked the blue eyes. Because of the avengement rule, it wouldn't be under their control. And then no food would grow without pesticides or fertilizers. Why are there so few green-eyed people left? Actually, they're not that few. But most of them have got a brown eyes with a bit of green in. Hmm? We need the green-eyeds to drag the blue-eyeds back to green-eyeds. Because in a sense, only a green-eyed person can, can kind of take a blue-eyed person to green. And then once you're green, all the brown-eyed people can help the green-eyed people become brown. But first of all, we need to make all the blue-eyed people become green. <laughs> Humans are the only creatures on this planet that have souls. And the animals don't. And, um, you know, at the moment you began... <gasps> Sure, Cara, what do you mean my dog doesn't have a soul? What? God, shut up, that's bullshit. Of course my dog has a soul, and my cat has a soul, and my horse has a soul, and elephants have souls. Which when you look at them, you know, you think, well, yeah, of course they would, wouldn't they? I mean, they seem to have affections and personalities and characteristics and things like that. So I'm going to do this from two arguments. So the first argument is this. If an elephant has a soul, then a giraffe has a soul. And a zebra, and a dog, and a cat, and a mouse, and a weasel, and a flea, and a fly, and a germ. So you start to see the logic here? Where do you draw the line? Okay, you could argue that all these beings and a little bit of bacteria has a soul. And when I do a poo, there's bacteria in my poo and there's lots of souls being flushed down the toilet. Yeah, difficult to argue that, isn't it? But if you're going to insist that your dog has a soul because you see it has character. Then here's the second part of my argument and use this logic. When you meet an animal... If it doesn't have a soul, if it's just a body and a spirit body, but clearly you can see they have affection. I mean, they have great affection, don't they? 
in a way it must be like God. The animal, in a sense, must have like a link to God. <laughs> They're all God's creatures. So I do like to think of all the animals as the eyes and ears of God. And if you're like, if you're somebody with a dog, you know, your law of attraction brought you a dog and you're kind of getting God's affection, God's help through your pet. The spiritual body has arms and legs and everything and it looks similar to what we look like in our physical body. So when you talk in your head, you are effectively talking with your spiritual body. And so if there's a spirit there, which there will be, the spirit will hear what you're saying in your head because that's your spiritual body talking. So the, but the mind, the intellect, is in the soul. So but you talking in your head and voices in your head would probably be from other spirits and your own voice. And you may have facades, so you may have different voices which are still your own in your head. You know, we can act in different ways, can't we? And it's all this is all real. So you know, before I knew those truths, thinking about all this was just really confusing. But then you think about the intellect and the soul, and if you do the soul sort of that shape, it's a demonstration of the intellect, mind part of the soul is at the top, and is the smallest organ of the soul. Then you have an organ sort of this area, which is bigger than the intellect which is humility and you can practice this and you can feel it you can feel when your mind intellect is engaged that's where all your belief systems come from the soul holds belief systems so you can hold the wrong truth and you will feel like you know that's the truth yet because it is wrong when you expand on it, and when you look into the face of eternity, infinity, it will scare you senseless, and you'll have to turn away, because you're holding a wrong truth in your belief system. Carry on with the soul. So then it gets to the biggest part of the soul, which is the heart. Now this is your capacity to love, and you can feel this too. You can feel it from others and you can feel it from God but to feel it from God you must have the correct belief system in your intellect you must have the humility and then for your heart to be open and down at the bottom is some emotions that are that are undone still due to come out suppressed emotions and affection somewhere at the soul as well I'm not quite sure on the rest of it, but m those three main parts to be able to conceive that. And then when I'm meditating and then I start feeling it and I just have to shut my head up, I kind of get into it through my thoughts and through yeah, yearning for God. That is essential. And then you can just start feeling. And whatever comes up, will be the thing you need to deal with. And when you have these feelings, you just know that there's nothing else in life that you could be doing right at that there and then that would be better for you. Because you know, because you're feeling it, and the soul can feel infinity and eternity, it's comfortable with that soul is quite comfortable when you're feeling that it has no issues with it the mind gets tripped out by it can't make sense of infinity or living for eternity the soul can and yeah so you know you're you're undoing things which you've suppressed which is harming you 
constantly building up harming you even more and you, you're getting rid of these you've just letting these emotions go and while you're doing it God is encouraging you obviously this is why believing in God the parent makes this so different to just meditating and thinking of a tree or something you know you actually get God's assistance <laughs> and those who feels it knows it
I know the inevitable of what's coming, and um, I know what people are going to face when they face Judgment Day. How do I know this? Well, I've I had my own Judgment Day, and in fact, when Judgment Day comes for you, it will be your own individual day. It won't necessarily be everybody at the same time, although that could happen if there are sort of mass deaths. Not everybody faces a judgment day when they die, but lots do. Lots go into the spirit world, and it's at that point you would face judgment day. Now I say I've faced it in, in life. I faced it a few times. Three, I think. The first one was majorly, majorly, majorly stronger than the succeeding two. But a judge, in fact, probably after that, I've had many um, in the last six months, in fact. You know, and sometimes I just have to have two weeks worth of judgment. I mean, <laughs> words are difficult, okay? Especially the English language. There are many words in the English language I don't know, and perhaps some of those could help, obviously. But, you know, interpretations for a word like God, for example, is, is going to be different for everyone, except that there is one truth, and that is that God is our mother and father of our soul. And God is an all-feeling soul. You have to feel God. So when I say God, my interpretation, what comes in my mind, is different from a lot of other people, different from most people. Well, the thing is, we're all born with God. We're all con when we're conceived and our soul is new, it came straight from God. And it's not until you're about one and a half that you take that first step away from God. And hence we have the terrible twos, tantrums type thing. That is the pain when the child can no longer stay on the high level it love high level of love it was on, close to God, because of the errors it wants to do as a result of influence from parents and environment. Then we go further away again in adolescence and um I'm not sure for myself, I was clinging on a long time and I thought perhaps I'd clung on all the way. If I didn't, I'd probably gone back to that point. But I wouldn't say I've gone back to the level of love as a child yet, at least not permanently, but temporarily I've been in a higher level of love. And six months ago I was right back with God. In the last six months I've been speaking to lots of different people and seeing how lots of peop different people are differently closed to the um, concept of being be able to communicate with God. And by communicate I mean feel. Feel God and know that um, he, she is feeling you. And God would love for all of us to be in connection with him, her. take the wheat with the chaff. <laughs> Separating it is often just too difficult. You've got to do that in your in your belief system and you will, you see. But um, unfortunate if your belief system is wrong. And this is what's happening when I'm talking to people about God. And I'm here coming from a point of view that, you know, I, I am being with God. You know, maybe not 100%, but feeling definitely and visions certainly come in and it's is but it is helped by the cannabis and the way that works is i could get i could get high and then i could go and play a game on the computer upstairs right there's me no benefit whatsoever i might just enjoy it a little more get more into it so it's not just smoking cannabis 
and over this last six months I've been doing this smoke some cannabis, give up, smoke some, give up and usually it's about ten days off and a few days on although just recently I did have a period with a month and a half on and then a week off but it wasn't very strong stuff so but anyway it became a burden and it's like God's way of teaching you have to explore every possibility so that you can be sure that there's only one answer and this is part of the learning <clears throat> and then another time you may be able to feel the right answer but you had to explore every possibility to know that you had only felt one correct answer I've been having a lot of feelings in the last six months and not all of them have been God and they a few of them sort of fooled me earlier on but all the feelings are different and when it's God I know it's God so it, it is it is I don't it is difficult to convince you here listening that that that's the case but what I've learned to do is trust in my emotions and that's what I recommend you should do too.